Trashomaniacs. Gearheads. Well, welcome to Geo Gearheads. This is episode 368. And we're talking about road caching. In fact, we've talked about it so much, we have to have three Roman numerals to describe how many times we've talked about this. This is number 16. I had to do that math in my head, Daryl. Well, I was going to say, is it actually three Roman numerals? Because it's one Roman numeral that equals 16. Three, did, three Roman digits? Yeah, I th I think so. that might be more appropriate. Okay. Wow. Now we got into a whole new thing. We're going to need the research department to get on this and yeah. let us know what the correct terminology is. Because it's yeah. not places. Well, no. Three different values. Well, it's one value. Yeah, but each of the letters represent a value. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Okay. Should we keep going? <laughs> Let, let's do an entire episode on Roman numerals. Uh, you know what? We probably should at some point. <laughs> and, you know, they're also used in caches from time to time as a sort of obfuscation of a code. But yeah, not mostly often. of the uh, uh, actual like cache coordinates. Right. Though I haven't seen that as much lately. No, because, you know, it's so common anymore. Well, I, I, I think it's our show. Oh, we have upped the Roman numeral game in the geocaching community. Right, because one of the reasons why we did this was we had so many caches, at least in this area, that had started doing the uh, Roman numeral things that it kind of got to be normal. So I figured, oh, okay, yeah, we can do the Roman numeral thing. You know, I uh, talking about puzzles, I was working on one uh, a couple of weeks ago and I was making zero headway on this. And I talked with a previous finder. He goes, Oh, that was put out during the Google earth phase when everybody was doing go Google earth. You know, you had to go to that site in Google earth. And then there was a photo with details telling you where the cache coordinates were, but there was nothing on the page to lead me there. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so, you know, things like that do go through cycles where it's yeah. just assumed that's where you're going to go look for, the cache clue is on Google Earth. Well, and there was a phase at which some of those uh, links, as I recall, the uh, ref uh, the related page links mm -hmm. got stripped out too if they weren't straight HTML. Oh, interesting. I'd never thought about that. So it may have been in there years and years and years ago, and now it's gone. Oh, boy. Well, while we continue to bore our guest tonight... <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Welcome uh, back, Subway Mark. Thanks for uh, coming by and saving everyone from our uh, uh, Roman numeral discussion. Well, thanks. It's good to be back. I'm not sure which Roman numeral this is for me to be in back, though. Maybe V? I, I think this is only your third time back talking about uh, uh, road caching. So that would be three Roman digits. But I also did cruise caching twice, I believe. And rapid transit. Cruise and rapid caching and rapid, uh, transit. Or mass transit twice. So I think you've been on a total of seven times. That's VII. Yes. See? I still got it. See, he has as many digits to his Roman numeral as we have shows on road caching. Well, you're right. Digits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. We continue to get confused. What are we talking They are about? called symbols. So it's a three symbol Roman numeral. Thank you, GSM times two. So there we go. It's symbols. That's it. Right. Yeah. So this is a very <laughs> musical show, but not as musical as our uh, randomized shows. That's true. I, th I think we're in eight uh, symbols for the uh, randomized shows. Oh, very, very symbol-y. Yes. Very loud. <laughs> anyway. So, yes, we're back to talk about road caching again, mostly because you did a few uh, interesting trips and... This kind of got triggered by the uh, comment you sent in for, I think it was the last randomized show, actually, about uh, a hotspot that you had uh, done. Yes, yes. So, yeah, it, it, in, in December, we went to Hong Kong. It was kind of a spontaneous trip in my parlance means I, I booked it five weeks before we went. It was one of those, let's go to Hong Kong because I found a cheap airfare. 
Uh, so it was under seven hundred dollars round trip from Portland to Hong Kong. Wow! It was, yeah, it was I paid more than that to fly in the states. I know yeah. it's insane. So Hong Kong would be in in geocaching considers Hong Kong a, a country, even though it's part of China, but it's not part of China. Right. And I looked up other stuff, and I also figured out a lot of people consider it a separate country because Hong Kong has its own passports. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Regardless, so then it's like, okay, what are we going to do in Hong Kong? Well, geocaching is obviously one, but there's other things like my interest of subway. So they have the MTR, and then they have the the Ding Ding tram, and then the Victoria Peak tram, and then there's this uh, there's a mouse house there, you know, Hong Kong Disneyland. So I had to do that, but Ooh, very cool. But regardless, I had to figure out, okay, what are we going to do there, and, and so. Geocache is part of it, and so I had I ran pocket queries. I used GSEC to pull more more uh, geocaches down. I kind of used GSEC as kind of searching for cache titles to figure out okay, what's anything that's train oriented because that was always my thing. Hmm. And I loaded my GPS and my phone before I went. But uh, when I was looking for tickets to do like the Victoria Peak tram and stuff like that, I found this website called Cloak, which is apparently is a very popular site and in Asia, where you can get dis discounted tickets and stuff like that. But they also had, um, you could order a Wi-Fi hotspot to pick up at the airport. I said, hmm, that might be interesting. And then when it when it was $2.22 US per day, it's like, I think I will order this and pick it up. Maybe maybe it's bad, but you know, it was for there for four days, so it's under 10 bucks. I'll take the risk for 10 bucks and see what happens. So I got to airport and the, the cloak gave me exactly what kiosk was supposed to go to the airport pick it up picked it up was picked it up no problem and they showed me how to use it and it and it worked like a charm I, it was from from the time it turned on it took about five five minutes for it to acquire a 4g signal uh, but once it did that i had the password and so it, i was able to log my wife's phone and, and my phone into it and it it worked from there it was so she could do what she wanted and I could do what I wanted and not pay $10 per day per phone to use mobile data. That's, so, that's quite impressive. It was, it was pretty slick and it, it was about the size of a disc, a little mm -hmm. bit bigger than a hockey puck, but thinner than a hockey puck. And then it had a pull out USB uh, cord so you can plug it into a charger. And it was a standard USB so I could plug it into the same uh, chargers that I use for my phone. Uh, when I need to battery phone uh, batteries, I have the external mm -hmm. batteries, so that that worked out well. They said they it would work for about six to eight hours on a charge. It actually worked eight to ten hours on a charge pretty easily. Matter of fact, maybe more, but I'd still towards the end of the, end of the day traveling, I'd still goose it up a little bit, and it it is perfect. Uh, even though I had Wi-Fi at the hotel, I the, the this actually was better than the Wi-Fi at the hotel as far as connection and speed. That's that's not uncommon just because of how many people are also using the Wi-Fi at the hotel. Exactly. So impressive. And the, and, and you you used Kluk, K-L-O-O-K. Yes, that's the name of the website. I, yep. I think I had a case of that two years ago. Antibiotics <laughs> took care of it. That's true. I sneezed and stuff, but I've got discount Disney tickets there. That was cheaper than I'm buying it from Disney Direct. Okay. So it's actually a very well discounted website um, nice. for stuff. It acts as a travel agent. Uh, okay. And that's how they they get their discounts. So they bulk buy, I guess, what they do. Yeah, there's a lot of those that will do like group rates for uh, certain days and things like that. So you get. Uh... You get some good deals that way, but you do have to kind of watch out for some of those. So don't you know, make sure that you research and make sure they're good ones before you do and I, I, any old website. I, I did a lot of research on that because there was a lot of, I went to a lot of things on the web to hear about Cloak and because everyone's like, this is too cheap. What's wrong with it? And I went, well, there's some tickets I kind of held back because I didn't want to do because I was just afraid I was going to lose all my, my money. But I got there and everything worked like a charm. I just turned in a voucher at work for another voucher it worked so it was it was pretty amazing so i'm good if, if i'm going to asia again and i want to do touristy stuff i'm going to use cook again and i'm not i should get paid for this advertising yeah absolutely 
Today's show is brought to you by Kluke and their wonderful voucher system. Exactly. Well, use Kluke for your trip. next Asian travel. Exactly. <laughs> So this device was allowed to have up to five devices on it at any, any given time as a okay. Wi-Fi hotspot. Sounds and, like a lot of the other mobile hotspots that you can get. So I'm I'm pretty sure that they probably just took something that's a normal off-the-shelf unit and you know put their service on and rent it to you. Exactly. That's what because I, I looked online and I after I've seen it, it's like, oh, that's a pretty common device. But it has a little a little character on it that comes down to dancing on it. And, it's just that's an Asian thing, I think. I swear, <laughs> <laughs> but it would tell me how many devices are being are using at that time, which was right. kind of nice. Do you um, ever have a third odd device that wasn't yours? No, nope, it was always okay. my wife and I. <laughs> now, this isn't necessarily geocaching, but how does uh, Disney Hong Kong compare with, say, California or Florida? It's much smaller. It's a, it's it, it's like Disneyland uh, in California, which is a small park, but with less rides. They have a lot of space to expand, which they go into. They they kind of did. When Hong Kong went on the cheap. Um, they had they the castle was under reconstruction because they wanted to expand the castle when we were there. Uh, but they have Space Mountain, which is actually hyperspace mountain, so it was Star Wars themed at the time, and. But the one thing that they have that none of the other parks have is they have the, instead of Haunted Mansion, they have, uh, it's Mystic Manor. No, it's, I can't remember the name of it, but it's their Haunted Mansion is a totally different system. Mm. It's, it's a trackless system, right? Which was, which was phenomenal. It also broke down on our last ride on it. Yeah. So that we actually had to walk off the cars to, to get out. But wow. That's the first time that's ever happened in our lifetime. We thought it was pretty cool because the lights came up and we could actually see all the magic not being magic. There right. you go. I was going to say, it does, it, it's a window into the magic. And, exactly. And the sound off so you could hear all the uh, stuff moving, I'm sure. And the audio animatronics were all frozen in time and stuff like oh, that. Oh, they actually shut those down too. Yeah, yeah the whole, it went into like emergency shutdown. Okay. So. Well, because a lot of those rides, when they uh, stop the ride, the audio animatronics are part of a show system and they don't stop with it. Right. That's true. So there's but, a lot of videos out there now of uh, shutdowns, especially on Pirates of the Caribbean. And it is very, very scary with the lights on and hearing all of the clicks and pings and everything of the uh, audio animatronics without the soundtrack to cover it up. Well, with the trackless ride, they everything has to be timed with the, the vehicles. So they, if it stops, everything stops. So, yeah, and that's supposed to be a much more intricate show than any of the haunted mansion shows, too. Right. And there were geocaches outside the park. So, excellent. You had a chance to look in the well, what they call the haunted mansion, and then there was no geocaches in there. No. Oh, okay. I I know. <laughs> Probably plenty of Easter eggs, but no cash. You are. Cool. You are. But no dragging because the uh, castle's closed, right? Yeah, yeah, the castle was closed because they're going to make it into a, a big, big castle with lots of for all the princesses, basically, not just Sleeping Beauty. Got it. And actually, uh, I think I had heard something that they were not going to reopen with the uh, dragon because the dragon was giving them too many problems. Well, the dragons in that there's also a dragon in uh, Paris. Paris, yes. Yeah. Is Princess Leo one of those princesses? No. no. They should make her. She's a princess and Disney owns them. She's a Disney yeah. princess now. Yes. Correct. Yikes. Okay, totally off the subject, but... Like, yes. Off of what? Oh, we're going back to geocaching? But again, yeah. they, they had Wi-Fi in Disney, at Hong Kong Disneyland, but this little hotspot device was much more reliable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's very difficult to do Wi-Fi at a park like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly over any spread area it's difficult right but they had to put in the wi-fi at the parks for some of their new stuff like uh the uh, online ordering so at some of the parks and i don't know if hong kong disney is one of them you can actually order your food to uh, pick up at the window rather than have to wait in those silly lines no they didn't have it but they had the real time uh ride ride waits wait yeah. times and probably the uh, fast pass plus stuff they 
No, you still have to go to machines to get the fast passes. Oh. Yeah, there's still oh. a touch. Yeah. Wow. So antiquated. So yes. an- yeah, it's like Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Wow. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to geocaching. Thank you for indulging me on that. I, I do nope. appreciate that. I could talk for hours about it. <laughs> 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 a- a- anyway. Uh, were the geocaches, I, I assume you did mostly urban type hides? Yeah, they're mostly urban hides uh, that, I, that I did. You know, a lot of micros. There was there was a couple of smalls and, and one that I could actually exchange trail bugs in. Mm-hmm. But usually not in the city. It's more when you get, get to more of the residential neighborhoods and stuff like that. And uh, very typical hides from what you'd see in any of the big cities here in the U.S.? Yeah, there was no, nothing really surprising, which actually okay. surprised me. There was there were guardrail caches. Mm. <laughs> so it was like wow, it's a GRC. Uh, any skirt lifters or lamppost cache? There was no, there were none of those because there was no lamppost skirts. Right. Of course, there, of course, this there's not many parking lots, you know, big parking lots because oh. everyone takes urban transit for the most part. Right. Because traffic is too crazy, you just take the bus or the train to get around. But I didn't go to any of the big, you know, suburban style parking areas either. And Disney didn't have it in the parking lot. They had it around in, in the pedestrian area, but I, there was no caches in the parking lot. So okay. what about the actual, like, uh, caching and, um, you know, figuring out the uh, ones to hit, that kind of stuff? You mentioned already you looked for the railroads, but... Were the uh, caches in English still, or did you have to run translation? No, they were all in English. I didn't find any. They they had some that had Chinese as well, um, but they all had English. I didn't, didn't run into any. And they were all English named, too. So I've been to some areas in Japan. Some caches are just garbly gook on the GP, GPS because it doesn't understand Japanese characters. Yeah, no, <laughs> no support for uh, uh, the uh, two-bit characters. No, no. Two but, fight characters. But the one thing I did figure out pretty quick, because if anyone's been to Hong Kong, especially on the island, uh, the buildings are very, very tall and slender, and the streets are not very wide. So G- my handheld GPS, which I have a GPS map 62, uh, did not want to cooperate very well. Uh, when, it, when I first first turned it on, I, I even preload. I said, I'm in Hong Kong, and, and I'm about here. And guess I was moving, but it took 45 minutes to even get a fix signal. Yikes. You, you I, know, though, that doesn't surprise me considering how far you went from, you know, turning it off to turning it back on. Yeah, but I, was, I also was going to ask, was it does any better the next day, though? It was a little bit better the next day. But the thing is, is my GPS, I, I could say, well, I'm supposed to be here. So it reorients itself to the satellites it's expecting to see. Okay. And it still still took too long. And then when it was running for a while, it would have me a couple blocks over. It wasn't following me very well. So, which I, is typical in the uh, city. Yep, yep. Even you know, I've I've catched with the GPS in New York City. It New York City acted better than it did in Hong Kong. So, but the buildings are built. The streets in New York are a little bit wider, unless you're going down the side streets. So it it can get some line of sight. Hong Kong well, and they just, have that uh, regulation in uh, um, New York where you can't be uh, as tall at the top, basically. You have step right. backs. Right. So I'm sure that that probably helps with the GPS because then it's not regular shapes to bounce as easily. And it also gives you the uh, uh, better line of sight to the sky. Exactly. So that's when I gave up and just said, okay, I'm just using my phone. <laughs> and with the, and with the, I had turned my data off of my phone, so I was just running Wi-Fi just to make sure that I wouldn't, because my phone is not my phone, it's my my company's phone, and I don't want to get them yelling at me, what, what are you using data in, in Hong Kong for when you're not on business? Mm-hmm. So I turned it off, and but the Wi-Fi worked fine with the with the hotspot. And what what I found found the most interesting is it would follow me in the when I was riding underground in the MTR, the subway. It, it was actually, my phone was able to follow me because the 4G was able to follow me in the subway. 
Well, that's pretty cool. I wonder if that's wow. actually the uh, cellular, though, or if there's some kind of like eye beacon or something like that that's doing it. I don't know. I just know it, it when I came, I didn't really notice it so much because I wouldn't look at it when I'm on the train. But as soon as I got up, it knew exactly where it was. There was no reacquire time. So that's, it was instantaneous. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, that's always handy. Well, it, actually, you know what? If it's in like the subways, that could, uh, that could even be the um, uh, Wi Fi access points that are mapped. Yeah, I think so because all the stations have Wi Fi pretty much. Well, and especially because you had the cellular turned off on the phone, it couldn't have been the cellular. Right. Correct. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, more things to ponder. Yes. <laughs> But what did you end up doing for the uh, caches? Just load them into the uh, uh, phone and well, I had them in offline mode, or no? I I left the phone in in Wi-Fi, and I had them preloaded, but I would I would I would go live too all the time. So because I actually found it, it it worked better. The geocache I used mix between uh, Geo Live and Geocache app. I find Geocache app is very slow to up to populate live caches while geo live pretty much populates them almost instantaneously i'm not sure why geocache is slower than geo live when it's the same api but whatever well, it's the way they write their uh, calls and everything um gsm times two uh, uh wonders in the chat if cell phones are actually better accuracy these days than gpsrs and We've talked about it a few times. Basically, the answer is in most urban areas, you're going to be better off with the uh, cell phone, with a you know smartphone. But when you get out in the woods, you're typically better off with a GPSR. Correct. For, for accuracy. Mm -hmm. And part of that is the GPSR in the city has trouble with uh, refractions. Whereas in the uh, GPS or the smartphones, they can take advantage of things like the cell towers and the Wi Fi. Plus, they don't really have very good antennas, so it doesn't pick up the refractions as much as something like a, a C, uh, uh, 62 or 60, uh, 70, something like that, where it has that really good quad helix antenna. Mm -hmm. Those I've had the worst luck with in urban areas. But you take those out into the woods. They do so much better. And the cell phones have problems with that because they don't have any of those other things like the Wi-Fi hotspots usually. Yep. But, you know, some trees do have Wi-Fi. Nothing. Okay. Wow. wow. No, nope. nope. you're, <laughs> no. you're just wrong on that one. <laughs> hey, hey, I've, I've seen the uh, uh, towers on the you know the trees that look like or the towers that yes. look like trees yes i have i've seen many of those yeah and, kind of, and those just annoy me they look they so do. bad yes usually they're terrible <laughs> you drive by and you go really come on you're not even trying <laughs> i i get the whole thing of paint them like that you know dingy sky blue yeah. so that they kind of disappear but when you make them look like a uh, tree they just stand out and they, they look like fake trees Hey, like something you'd see at a Hooters. <laughs> I'm going to have to go to Hooters just to check out the fake trees. Yeah, that, that's all the reason I'm going. That's why. That, that, going. That's a dig at one of the ho local Hooters that got shut down. They got into it uh, with the city over the fake trees on the corner. They put palm trees on the corner in Michigan and they looked so <laughs> fake, including the lights. Oh, boy. Uh huh, but it actually caused some accidents. So the city had a good point. Wow, wow. It, it, it's um, one of those nights. Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> Mark, did you take the high speed rail between uh, Hong Kong and China? No, because I did not have a China visa. I oh. could not. I could not go. You just don't get off the train. <laughs> and it doesn't work that way. You actually clear customs before you get on the train. Unfortunately. Oh, okay. Bummer. And I thought about trying to see if I could go take the new bridge that they just opened to go to Macau, because mm -hmm. that's also a special administrative area. Okay. But the bridge lands in mainland China first. It's only about 10 miles from oh. Macau, so you have to have a visa to go through. Okay. It's, I could have taken a ferry, but I, we didn't have a lot, a lot of time. 
Right. But no, I just I just saw the high speed train. You know, you can get um, fourteen minutes between Hong Kong and China, which really isn't that far to begin with. No, but if you take the tra- the MTR, the the old way, the what was the Kowloon uh, Canton Railway, it mm-hmm. takes about forty five minutes. So okay. that's a big difference. <laughs> I guess I did do that. I did travel, yeah. Which is now part of the subway system. That that line. <laughs> oh, okay. The one thing I liked about the Wi-Fi hotspot, my, my wife likes geocache in the sense that it makes it makes me take her somewhere, but she's really <laughs> snuggle muggle. So, right. it's, so what's nice is I had the hotspot in my camera bag, and I could go, I could go quite a few. I'd, I'd probably probably 150 feet, 200 feet away, and she still had a good signal. From, on her phone so she could be you know looking at facebook or whatever she's doing so <laughs> while she's bored because i'm looking for geocache really she's she's occupied <laughs> there so you that, go that's yeah. that's always a good thing <laughs> but she 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 enjoyed uh, the train stuff even in hong kong she still even today uh it was hong kong disneyland was that's our thing and i love it too mm-hmm. but we rode rode the ding ding or the the trolley that runs on the island from one end to the other and we rode on the upper deck and she says that was just as fun as disneyland because you see really hong, because you see in real hong kong from the way most people would see it as opposed mm-hmm. to what mm-hmm. tourists would do because we went through we literally went from one end of the island to the other by tram and then took the subway the other way which also goes one end of the island to the other way to the, to the other okay but, but the subway is not as interesting because it's all underground Well, that's what makes it a subway. That's correct, but it's not as very touristy as far as you can see stuff. Oh yeah, no, the the view isn't quite the same. No, but it's faster. But and you get to see many interesting things in the subway. And, and the subway takes twenty five minutes to go from one end of the island to the other. The tram takes about ninety minutes. Because <laughs> it's it's a lot of stops. <laughs> White well, coaster said it's hard to see the city taking the subway. But you get to see all the characters. I was going to say you you are seeing the city just from a different perspective. That's right. E. And now I'm thinking about the uh, elevators they have with the uh, screens on all sides. Mm-hmm. Yes. And how cool would that be to have the uh, uh, subway do that? That would like, be cool. Here's here's the underside of the building that you're passing under right now. <laughs> have, you, have you been to New York to the One World Trade to go on the elevator that goes to the observation deck now? I have not, but I've seen the videos of it. Oh, it's awesome. It is really awesome <laughs> to see New York go from nothing to what it is today as the elevator's going up is pretty wild. Well, it, it's a very impressive way to keep people happy and spending more money. True. And that worry about that you're flying up in an elevator is really super fast. <laughs> yes, I was going to say the other thing that they talk about is uh, those elevators help to reduce the uh, uh, incidence of sickness. Hmm. I, I, I could see that because your eyes are occupied. <laughs> well, and your mind is uh, thinking of something other than what's happening that you're not processing correctly. Correct. But speaking of weird elevator problems. And Disney, someone, I think it was uh, uh, Jim Hill was talking recently about an issue like 15 years ago, maybe more, where someone sued Disney because they got uh, uh, pressure sickness from going down in the hydrolators at the Seas exhibit at uh, Epcot. They actually took, I think he said the entire jury and, you know, the whole court to the uh, exhibit and opened all the doors and say, see, there is no elevator here. It's all just a show. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Dismissed. Goodbye. Oh, that's funny. Wow. Some people really buy into the fake. Yeah, they do. They do. Anyway. So any of the uh, caches that really stuck out as uh, exciting finds? 
Uh, so actually, not really. They were just pretty much average stuff. Um, you know, there was there was two by the Museum of, of History, the Hong, uh, Hong Kong Museum of History. They weren't didn't stand out, but they they told they gave one was actually inside the museum, so that did stand out. I will say that. Uh, so one was inside a theater, and you inside the museum, and you you had to sit in a certain seat, and then you reach behind, okay, and grab it. So that was interesting. In the fact that once I, but the thing is, it's it's museum history has several theaters, so you have to figure out which theater, because of course the GPS won't tell you, because you're inside. <laughs> so. Well, and I was just wondering how they actually got the approval to put a uh, cache inside the uh, uh, museum. I that I don't from, know from geocaching.com. I'm wondering if they just didn't pay attention to it. That's probably what the answer is. Yes. Because <laughs> I'm thinking that would be uh, uh, something that I would try to do. Yeah. W once I figured out that, wait, no, this is inside the museum. It's like, okay, where the heck is this thing? But it's a great museum. I, if you're ever in Hong Kong, go to the Museum of History. It's pretty, pretty neat. It's, it's about the city history, not natural history. I was just going to okay. say, any any history in gen, uh, specific, or is it just general history? It goes from Hong Kong when it was prehistoric uh, to to when it was first settled, and then up to modern day. So you know, it's they, always being updated. I guess so. Yeah, like they, they change the uh, uh, candy wrappers or something every uh, couple of days to. <laughs> make sure it's there, there you go. <clears throat> This is Dick, fresh bubblegum. <laughs> right. Uh, Dick Magnet wants to know if there were any uh, virtuals that you did. Um, there was one virtual that I did. Um, it was It's on the Star Ferry. So you ride the, the Star Ferry goes between the mainland and the island, and you had to collect information off the ferry uh, to get it. Uh, there was another one that I was, was going to get, but it just ran out of time. But it's kind of cool because I wanted to ride the Star Ferry anyway. So it's like, well, I'm geocaching while I'm on the ferry. There you go. The whole seven Ooh. minutes it takes to get across. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually were geocaching more than sightseeing. Cor correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how about the Snuggle Muggle? Did she have any uh, uh, favorite locations that caches were at? A good view kind of stuff? Uh, so... She we went to at, at every night at 8 p.m. They have the light show in Hong Kong where they all the buildings they have a set to music, uh, and they light up the skyscraper across the across the bay there. And so there's a cache there, and it was so, and we wanted to see the show anyway. It's a show you'd probably see once, and that's it. But it was kind of fun to see that at the same time. Nice. So any a cache and a uh, show exactly. Any other types of caches, like an earth cache, or yeah, there was there was an earth cache as well. Uh, there was, I think it was on Victoria Peak. Yeah, it was Victoria Peak that I had okay. to get an earth cache. And then uh, after I got a cache that was on Victoria, a, a, a normal size cache, a regular size cache that had travel bugs in it, I convinced my wife, oh, let's walk down there because that, that's another way you can hop on the tram to get back down. Yeah, at that time of night, because it's so crowded, they, the trams don't stop at the intermediate stations. So I, we watch the trams go by. Bye-bye. Even though you press a button to say, <laughs> call it, because it's the funicular. It's a cable on that one. But hmm. So we had to walk back up. Uh, <laughs> I don't think she was very happy with that. Well, she wasn't at first until we got to a part where we're almost <laughs> there, and there was the fire, a fireworks start, show started. So I was like, oh, you see, we see fireworks. So she was okay with that. <laughs> Good. It was opportunity. <laughs> uh, yeah, it sounds like fun, though, all the way around. Uh, but n what was a cash mix uh, that you found in the city? Was it mostly traditionals and not much else? Uh, mostly traditionals. Uh, I didn't do any multis. Uh, there, there were a few multis because I... I tend to, when I'm travels, stick to traditionals, earth caches, letter well, especially boxes. Especially with the uh, snuggle muggle. Yes, especially mm -hmm. with the snuggle muggle. I happen to be on geocaching.com looking there. There's a good number of where I goes. Yeah, there were. Really? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, that would have been cool. Right around the bay there and the bridges. Yep. Yeah. If you have the time and the desire, it's always fun to go and get as many different kind of icons when you travel. 
-hmm. It's just typically, unless you're on a geocaching trip, you're too busy to do a lot of those, like especially the where it goes and the uh, uh, multi-caches tend to take so much time. You just don't want to take the time to do those. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I look to see if there's a web, webcam cache that wasn't any in the area. So it, that was how. Uh, and there were no events when I was there. So, oh, there was one, but it, it was going to be early in the morning. And I knew my wife didn't want to wake up for that. So. <laughs> Smart so, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're on vacation. You're, you're not going to get up early to go do a uh, event. Yeah, exactly. I have taken her to events in, in like, a, I, we did it in Edinburgh, which was kind of fun. But And I understand you also stopped over in uh, Seoul. Yeah, so we, on our way back, uh, we had a nine-hour layover in Seoul at Incheon Airport. And originally, the plan was, let's go into the city and come back. Uh, but the flight from Hong Kong left at midnight and then got to Seoul at you know five in the morning, and I was still interested in going, but my wife was pretty exhausted, so we we rented one of those. They call them capsule hotels, although I wouldn't call it the capsule hotels. More of like a closet hotel. So it's a bed in a closet, basically, with okay. your own little sink, and it was uh, thirty eight bucks for for six hours, which I thought was cheap. So I took a nap. She took a nap, and then I said. And this was outside the, we actually went into the non-secured side of the airport. We didn't do the transit hotels. So this was outside. So we had to clear customs and such like that. And because I had a plan of, I still need to get geocaches. Cause I've been to South Korea once, but that was pre geocache. And so I had to get mm. a cache. So then I said, okay, you, you can continue to nap. I'm, I'm heading out. I got to go get to get geocaches. Uh, we were at T Terminal 2, so I had to figure out how to get to Terminal 1 because it was outside of Terminal 1. But I was able to get two ge geocaches. One one was, one was wasn't a skirt lifter, but it was in a lamppost in the sense that it wasn't a hull for one of the bolts for the lamppost. So that's the closest I had a lamppost <laughs> cache. <laughs> and then there was another one just a tenth of a mile away in a bush. So that, that, that was my two, and then I was able to get back here. Of course, I rode two trains also while I was in Seoul. <laughs> One was a maglev train, so I had to do that. Ooh. How was that? Smooth, uh, right? It was smooth. A slow maglev train because it's it's only for the airport. It goes to remote the parking lot and then a couple other stations that there's nothing around it. It's for future development. Mm -hmm. But it was smooth and quiet. Very cool. I'd, I'd love to have uh, ridden on that thing. Yeah, I've you been mag love to love on to ride on it. Yeah, yeah I mag lived in sh Shanghai. Now that's a fast mag lift. That's the real mag. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> but yeah, the mag love stuff doesn't have to be fast. It's just cool because it's Leo you know, low friction. We'll yep. say, but use a lot of power to elevate those look cars. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Hence, why there's not very many of them. No, but they. This company and it's it's my I believe it's Hyundai that made these cars and the whole idea is if this is a demonstrator project so they're hoping other cities will grab it and they'll make money off of it. Tech Magnet wants to know if there's any maglevs in the U.S. Uh, I'm trying to think of it. Can you think of one? No. There was talk of one in uh, Vegas and another in uh, right. uh, Florida, but I don't think any of those have panned out. They never went off the ground. Yeah, uh -huh. and, yeah, and it's always been wow. the uh, uh, airport runs that I remember. Yeah, they, there's a test track in Japan that they're now they're building a building a full line in, out of, but that won't be ready for until like 2024, I think, when it opens. That'll be the first true long distance maglev. Yeah, yeah, and the, the that's really what they're designed to do but just no one's really done much with them right well they're so expensive and they they are and they 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 don't like they, they have to be almost straight they they can curve but it has to be very very gentle so mm -hmm. that's a lot of real estate <laughs> yeah and it's even worse building the uh, tracks for those as like the monorails or the elevateds 
Yeah, because also gradients too. They have to be less right. gradients. <laughs> a right. monorail you can have a steep gradient for because it's rubber tired. Yep. You can't can't do that with a maglev. No. And someone was trying one in a tunnel, but I don't think that ever got anywhere anyway, because that just was too cost prohibitive by the time you were done. No, but the test track in Japan is partially in tunnel. It's all actually very little of it's above ground and the line that they're building is mostly under in because it's going through the mountains through central Japan is oh. mostly through tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. See, and that makes a lot more sense to me too. Cause then you don't have to worry about, uh, uh, wildlife collisions and stuff like that. No, but they have to worry about the shock waves as it come in and out of the tunnels. Yes. Which is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, and didn't they do some kind of uh, bellows system in, uh, uh, Japan with that one to try to uh, compensate? Yeah, they did it on the Shinkansen as well, the the, the, the rail-based high-speed line, because the t that is a bad... It, it, you get the shockwaves of two trains passing and, and then blown out of the tunnel. So they, they've they built um, steel canopies that extend the tunnel, but it, it acts as a, as a kind of a bellows to kind of dissipate the wa the sound waves coming out. Right. Yeah, and this is not a maglev problem. This is a high-speed problem. I mean, that airplane, no different than a supersonic jet. Right. Yay, yay, yay. All right, we've been babbling way too much this episode, but hopefully people still enjoy it. <laughs> um, uh, and some of it is the uh, fault of the chat room. Chat room, you're not keeping us on track. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's not their job to keep no, us on track. it's not their job. We've gone off the rails. We've oh, gone off the rails. We but we're rails. still talking about the rails. <laughs> Uh, yes, we're talking about the rails and the lack thereof. Anyway, let's uh, let's get uh, uh, done with this one. Um, before we do, though, you are planning what sounds like a really cool cruise coming up. Yeah, so in March we're going to be leaving for Australia, and then we'll, so we're leaving for Sydney, and then we'll be in Sydney for a few days. Then we hop on a cruise ship to go around the, both islands of New Zealand, and they. Then we come back, and then we go up to Keynes to go up to the Great Barrier Reef, and then we fly down to Melbourne for the last few days before we head home. 20, 25 days in in that part of the world. What? Yep. Wow. How long is the cruise? 13. Okay. 13 minutes? Days. <laughs> <laughs> it's a supersonic cruise. <laughs> I was going to say, wow, that's a lot for a 13 minute cruise. Well, it is a hydrofoil. <laughs> Talking about the supersonic waves. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, no, that does sound like an awesome uh, trip. I'm more than a little jealous. It's our 30th wedding anniversary, so I like to try to do something. Yeah. So it should have been a 30 day cruise. You, well, you they're doing 25 it, days out of 20, the country. 25 is pretty close. <laughs> actually, <laughs> well, because I lose a day flying over, it's we're actually out 27 days, but we're 25 days over there. Just so leave up. It's put weird, in a three-day layover, and you can say it's a 30-day trip for your 30th anniversary. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we, we totally lose a day going over there because we, we f pop down to L.A. first, and then our flight leaves L.A. on a Saturday at 11 p.m., and then we arrive at 8, 8 a.m. on Monday in Sydney. So that Sunday does not exist. <laughs> so so I can't die because they have to give me my that day back. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So you leave on Saturday, you get there on Monday, yep. and it's a you know 12-hour flight. Okay. 15 15-hour 15. 15 flight yeah yeah so the math doesn't work I you're know. making my head hurt <laughs> i know but when we fly back we we leave we leave five in the morning on on a wednesday and we get to portland <coughs> after going through sydney and la we get to portland at 11 15 a.m the same day so okay yeah white coast just says so much for uh caching streaks that's one of the problems. If you're going to lose an entire day in the air, you can't do a cash. Well, yeah, I know that is, that is bad. That's why I don't you, do that. If you flew to Hawaii, stayed the night and then flew again to, uh, Australia, you might be able to get that day back. Yeah. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> but, but, what, what is kind of cool though, is I'm going to leave a cash right by where we're staying in Melbourne. 
uh, for that morning before we head to the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh, get a yeah. cash there, and then I'll get a cash when I get back to Portland. So that's amazing mileage in one day. There you go. <laughs> it will it be the same day? Yeah, it'll be the same day. Okay. As far uh, as calendars the, concerned, uh, keepers of the cash flow said that. Uh, uh, C. Michelle flew through Hawaii to keep the uh, daily streak going. And I do remember him talking about that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, there's ways. You just have to. You have to be committed. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Or you should be committed. Yeah, well, that, uh, that's more like it. You, we are <laughs> going to be doing a show on streaks again soon, I'm sure. But Keep your pants on this time. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> what fun is that? All right. All right, that, that's enough of the show, I think. Thanks so much, so way, Mark, for being here. Well, Mark, it was a joy having you on the show. You won't be on another one, apparently. <laughs> wow. Bye. <laughs> no, no, you you're, welcome. Of, you're you certainly welcome back, Mark. but we have to end this now before you're not welcome back. <laughs> and us, too. <laughs> Chris, Chris never wears pants. <laughs> yeah, we we know. Chris, don't stand up. Yeah, like, well, thank let you, me, oh, wait a that. You're just making the problem worse. <laughs> hey, I have to be comfortable. <laughs> TMI. Anyway, <laughs> thanks again. We look forward to hearing about the uh, cruise and all of those adventures and uh, upcoming shows. And hopefully, yes, you'll have some new stories of uh, mass transit that you'll be able to share and talk about that on yet another show. Oh, yeah. Melbourne has the world's largest tram network. Ooh. How would you uh, know that? Sounds like something you'll have to do research while you're on vacation and come back with a report. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Gary says, uh, Wet Coaster says that uh, you did wear pants in uh, Victoria for the show. Do you want me to tell you a little secret? Oh, no, no. Okay, never mind that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Let's move on. <laughs> Mark, it was a pleasure having you. If you didn't get enough of, of Subway, Mark, come find us on Cashing in the Northwest. He's going to podcast all night with us. Well, you know, kind another of. hour or so, but in a couple of hours. <laughs> Check the Cash Maniacs website at cashamaniacs.com for more on the Geo Gearheads, including show notes for this and all of our episodes. We love hearing from our listeners, so leave us feedback by emailing geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com or through social media. Your support helps keep the Cash Maniac shows coming. Please consider becoming a patron through the link on the website to support the Cash Maniac shows. Geo Gearheads is produced by Chris Huffenauer and Daryl Wanberg. This show is copyright 2019 by Daryl Wanberg. All rights reserved. Yes, we're the Cash of Media. Yes.